but you've got to give them everything they need to do it. You can't push them that way. You've got to convince them slowly. You've got to provide a compelling case. And I just want to use Nuts as an example because I work with Nuts for Life. We're involved in some of the programs that I do. And I buy bang on about Nuts all the time. Who, who loves Nuts? Who eats Nuts? OK, then. Lots and lots of hands in the room. You're convinced from that. Macadamias. How much fat's in macadamias? You know when they put the, the score up on the footy and you, they say, look away if you don't want to know? Macadamias are 80% fat. Wow. The 1990s, which was that fat phobic decade, and even dietary guidelines don't, in Australia, we don't have a fat food group at the moment. We'll get one next year or so. They'll put it back in because we made a mistake. So nuts are making a comeback because people are realising, wow, I don't have to get to a low fat diet. Healthy fats are important. Let me give you some figures on, on nuts here. Five reasons why nuts can work for weight loss. And who would have thought eating a fatty food would help you lose fat? And that's starting to work. So some things you might think are a challenge for your food, your industry, if you workshop them enough, you run some ideas around, you see what consumers really want, you're probably going to come out with a standout angle that you can really, really promote. So number one, nuts are hard to digest. Because they're a whole hard food, they're physically hard to digest, and that means your body has to work harder. So it slightly increases metabolic rate. The fat is not all absorbed. So you get fat malabsorption, and some of that goes straight through. Not enough to notice, but enough maybe in combination with the digestion to account for 10% of the energy lost. So here's the proposition. If you love cashews, I love honey salted cashews. Can't eat too many of those. If you line up 10 cashews, your 10th cashew is like a bonus free cashew because 10% of the, the energy in the cashews is lost. And if you collect up all those 10th cashews, you can essentially eat free cashews. Does that make sense? No, 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 I'm ripping you off if I tell you that. So it's a good reason to convince consumers to eat them. They're high in protein, and the research is out again and again. Even Kellogg's Guardian cereal and Special K is saying, high in protein to keep you full. So if you can tag your message onto another message that's out there, then essentially Kellogg's are doing the advertising for nuts. They're nutrient rich, so they prevent that metaflammation, and they target appetite to reduce cravings. There's a hormone called galanin, and he sounds very evil. He's like Luke Skywalker's father, you know, he's really, really bad. And at 3.30 in the afternoon, he comes out and he says, I want fat. And what happens if you're walking past the vending machine at that time? you get something from the vending machine. But if you've got your dose of nuts, then you just have your nuts and the fat in nuts keeps gallon and at bay and makes that really, really happy. It's stories like that that we have to work out and weave around the food products. It's stories that consumers will like and they'll want to share with them. So nuts is an example. There's five different angles on nuts. It's only a case of working out what the angle is that you can share with your food. What is the nutrient rock star in your food? We heard about the plums there. We heard about the pineapples and the vitamin C. Walnuts, omega-3s, that's good for the eyes, that's good for the brain, reduces depression, protein for appetite suppression, and so on here. So what's your nutrient rock star in your food that you can really, really highlight? What are the colours there? The red colour, the super red tomatoes that we just saw. Is there a particular colour angle that you can go with? This is a chart I use in my Metabolic Jumpstart program. It goes up on the fridge at home. Mums put it up and their kids look at it and they go, I should eat that colour today. So what I'm starting to work on now is what sort of supporting materials, what sort of education, what sort of research will go with your food products because you can't just put something out there and say, hey, we've got three times the amount of vitamin C. People go, yeah, I know vitamin C is good. It reduces colds, maybe. So what's the story? What's the education that goes around? And this is the architecture of the communication and the messages. My hot tip for you is get something on the fridge. And the easiest way to get something on your customer's fridge is to put a fridge magnet on the back of something. Because what happens when people get a fridge magnet on the back of something? They put it on the fridge. They can't help themselves but put it on the fridge. So that's a hot tip for you. So what is it about your fruit, your vegetable, your nut, your fungi that is special? And what can you work up that will pass the test and go out there into production? This is the cold cabinet at a service station in the UK. Now, mind you, there's three times the population in the UK. But I walked past it and went, whoa. As a dietitian, I'm trying to get people to eat more fruit. And look at that, all this packaged fruit there. Um, Roger said packaging is one element of where this phytonutrient revolution is going to. So you might have a, a normal food 
that you just package differently that's in a way that's really convenient for consumers. And that's that design. I mean, look at iPhones. The whole design issue has taken our consciousness these days. But there's a checklist that's got to go through. Is the food authentic? I.e., are people going to say, yeah, this is really healthy and it makes sense? They've just got to go, yeah, straight away. They've got to know you are uh, you're got their health in mind rather than you're just trying to pump out a product there for profits. People don't like that. Is it natural? And I guess the filter to run through there is, have we messed with nature? Have we messed with nature? If you just ask yourself that and you go, no, we've just bred different fruits over time and come up with one that's better than the others and then we've spliced them together and we've done that. That's a real natural message. If you've done genetic modification and that, consumers don't like that. So you've got to tell your story about how natural the food is. And is it relevant? I, will the consumers eat this every day? Is it something they can put in their lunchbox or for their kids to go to the school or they'll keep in them in their pocket? I mean, I have a saying, it's never leave home without a banana. Never leave home without a banana, which means every day I walk out, I take a banana with me, I put it in my pocket and I have it there all day. So when I get hungry, what happens? I reach into my pocket and I've got a banana, as simple as that. So that's relevant, isn't it? I mean, bananas are packaged really, really nicely. But is it something that will become a habit rather than just a fad? Is it a habit that consumers can use every day? And can they share it? Can they share it? Would, would they make a YouTube video about it? Would they put something on Facebook to their friends? And I think that's a good test too. Have you got a, a fruit, vegetable, nut, fungi, that is something people will want to share and tell that story. I always use that test. Is it something so people will share at the dinner table? And to give you some examples of, of what we're doing at the moment, um, with nuts, the role of nuts in heart health, the role of nuts in weight management are some consumer-based research documents that have been put together. And I give them out in my seminars for health professionals and fitness professionals. So once you've got your food, you've got your packaging, you've got the angle, you know it's run through that test, then becomes the job of consuming, so convincing consumers. And health professionals are really looking for resources to pass on. I work in the fitness industry. Those guys are passionate about healthy eating and exercise naturally, but they share a lot. They share with people that are unfit. So, for example, when they learn in courses, they then want to go and pass on that information. And that's the space that I work in. So there's a whole bunch of people, some of them quite fit and quite muscly, I know, but a whole bunch of people that want to share information and pass it on to consumers. And they do that when the message is really, really clear. So if they know that blueberries are like nature's lollies that they can replace instead of sweets, they that know that nuts are nature's vitamin pills that they can have, they know that they can never leave home without a banana, take a banana with you, take a Ziploc bag of nuts, little suggestions there, then these things really help. And that's all your messages that are going to make it sell. Another example is Nutrient Rich Fitness. That's an event in the fitness industry uh, sponsored by Apple, Avocado and Banana Industries. Um, that's in one month time and we sold out for that because it's free. It's a free event too, uh, a month ago. So we've got 200 fitness professionals that are ready to come along and share that information. They just want to know what is it about apples that is really healthy and new. They know an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but what about that metaflammation? That's new information. What if I have an apple today it reduces my waistline today, not keeps the doctor away in 10 years' time. What is it today? Avocados, you mean I get vitamin E and healthy fats today, yes. And then bananas, potassium for sports performance. So their message is they will go on and share. People are ready to share. And I guess the ultimate test, just to finish off, is um, can your food be a fan food? And what I mean by a fan food, is this something people love to have and be associated with? And if you look at this, bananas, down on the left-hand side, 13,365 people like this, Australian bananas. And when you put a message up there in social media, they share it straight away. So the ultimate test is, will there be a Facebook page for your food? Don't put that out of the question because it shares easy and it costs a lot less. The money you spend on research and development, you won't have to spend on getting the message out. And the ultimate test is, will people have a tattoo of your food on their shoulder, like Harley Davidson? That's the ultimate test, even better than a Facebook page. I'm not sure. I don't have any tattoos. I'm waiting for your food to come along and inspire me to actually put that tattoo on. So my message to you is join, join the revolution, put the energy, the resources and the effort into it and just know that consumers, 
The health conscious ones are ready to take up this information, they're ready to share your message, and if you make your message compelling and remarkable, they'll share it with others, they'll bring them with them, and we'll make a dent in the nation's waistline. Um, thanks very much for, for Bear's Outlook, Horticulture Australia. Uh, I appreciate being able to come along and speak to you today. Thanks so much. Thank you.